going on, man? What are you doing? Get that light off me. Get that light off me. Get that light off me. So you can shine a light in my face, but I can't shine a light yeah. in your face? Is that how it works, officer? Excuse me? Is that how it works? You can shine a light in my face, and I can't shine a light in your face? I'm going to tell you to get that light off What are you going to tell me? me? Okay. Get that light off me first, then. Why can it's you? Done. Okay. Okay. My country. I recognized you from that car. I knew exactly what you were coming up here for. Hence why I wasn't aggressive towards you. But I'll tell you what, had you come up to me and I didn't know you or recognize you, and you're flashing the light, sure, I'm telling you right now, it, it would got a, you don't walk up to a cop, shining light. Ask them, are you guys like trained to shine a light in people's face? Absolutely faces? we are. Absolutely. To just keep it on their face for like no, five minutes during right the conversation? Yeah, I'm feeling trained enough. I teach you. Yeah. Did I cross the border? Come to get an honest job. Why don't you get a real job, man? I'm not crossing a border. This is the United States. I'm just driving around California. Why'd you just waste 20 minutes of my time? What border is this? So there's a border to go from San Diego to Los Angeles? Hey, can you tell me what border I crossed? In the border patrol checkpoint, the person's rights doesn't matter here. Oh, my rights don't apply here? They don't apply here at a checkpoint. So I have no rights at a checkpoint. You do not have rights. I can print it out for you if you want to see it. Go ahead and print it out. Fine. I do not know that. But I can't see inside that window and the way you're behaving. And you're acting in a very... You know what? Manner. I'm behaving like somebody who believes that this is a free country and doesn't appreciate this stinking police state where I have to be stopped in the middle of the road to tell you the answer to a question. I just want to go free on my way. Tell me when I'm free to go. If you're detaining me, then tell me why you're detaining me. There's no suspicion here. I want to go on my way. I'm being illegally detained. According to the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, which is the highest law in this country. Right. The Constitution, this checkpoint's already been upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States. That's why I stopped here, because this checkpoint has been upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States. So, basically, what's going on here is you're refusing to cooperate with the inspection. You're detained. I'm, al I'm allowed to be stopped here, but my car is not allowed to be inspected without a warrant or probable cause, and you have no probable cause or a warrant. I've stopped here, but I will not allow you to search my vehicle without a warrant. I can't allow you to search my vehicle without a warrant. What's that? Let me tell you how you're, that, that's gonna be, you're, you're feeling that you've got no penalty coming up here, okay? And I'm about to explain to you the penalty, okay? You are not free to go until the inspection is complete, okay? We have referred you to the secondary inspection area and you are refusing to move your vehicle. Thereby, you're blocking the lane of travel on the interstate. New Mexico State Police will cite you, and they are coming. You know what? I want to go free on my way. I'm not going to pull into secondary because I want to go on my way, and you don't have the right to send me to secondary because I don't have any reason to be suspected, and I want to go on my way. You have no probable cause. I'm saying you don't have probable cause here, and so I, I want to go on my way. Cause, sir. I just you can't you. send me to secondary without probable cause. Yes, I can. I can send you to secondary for me with mere suspicion. You have no reason to suspect me of violating immigration. So I told you. 
I told you that I've crossed no international border. Negative, sir. We well, don't need you to cross. I'm in the United States. I want to travel freely in the United States. I've stopped as the law requires me to do, and now I want to go on my way. Sir, would you cooperate with the inspection? You will be allowed to depart and thereby continue your I want to go free on my way. Well, you can't, sir. We're detaining you. What? What suspicion are you detaining me on? We're detaining you on mere suspicion of illegal activity, which is all... What illegal activity do you suspect me of, well, sir? Right now, you're interfering in a federal investigation. This is... Uh, listen, uh, Agent Hutchison, what have I done to make you suspect me of illegal activity? Your lack of cooperation in and of itself... I don't want to cooperate because I want to go free on my way. I have cooperated by stopping here. By stopping, I've cooperated so with the, the checkpoint. I stopped and I obeyed the law, and now because I am suspicionless, I want to go free on my way because I am a U.S. citizen and the Fourth Amendment says that I have the right to be secure in my person and property and not to be searched without a warrant or without some kind of probable cause. What activity are you suspecting me of? Sir, I have no idea. What Ill so you have no idea what you suspect me of, but you just somehow suspect me of illegal activity? That's not probable cause. You just said that you have no idea what you suspect me of. But you have some ID. I want to tell me when I can go on my way. I you to present valid ID while operating a motor vehicle to any peace officer. We are peace officers. Let me know when I'm free to go on my way. So you're refusing to present an ID card while driving? And I That's not what I said. I said I want to go on my way. Sir, do you have a valid driver's license? Just let me know when I can go. Well, you're not free to go, sir. Sir, right now you're in violation of the law. Because you refuse to present a valid ID card. This, you are in violation of the law by sending me to secondary without suspicion. Well, and you, right now, sir, I'm pretty sure you're a terrorist. You're pretty sure I'm a terrorist because I believe in the United States Constitution? Well, yes, sir. I, I think you're attempting to use the law to yourself to smuggle some type of contraband through our checkpoint. And until we prove that you're not... You know what? I've already said that I'm on my way to work and that I've crossed no international border. Well... That's very nice, sir, but that's not the question we asked you, is it? Well, just let me know when I'm free to go on my way. Do you have some identification? Sir, you're not permitted to leave until after inspection. We've referred you to the secondary inspection area. Uh -huh. right. Sir, you're detained. You are not free to go. If you attempt to leave the checkpoint, that is, in fact... Your I'm not going to leave until you tell me that I'm free to go, and I'm waiting to hear that I'm free to go. You are not free to go. Our superiors feel that... Uh, we got better things to do than to play this game with you, sir. So we've been ordered to uh, allow you to depart the checkpoint. Okay? okay, so am I free to go? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. All right, if these guys will uh, get out from front of my car, maybe I can drive out of here since I'm free to go. I was being filmed on my way in. I saw the cameras filming me, and so I'm filming you, Officer Martinez. Okay, and now I'd like to go on my way, Agent Martinez. So we don't know what you're doing with that. That's what This is a video camera. I'm taping exactly. you with it, uh, Agent Martinez. Yeah. And I saw the camera taping me on the end. What, what are you That's doing with that? That's not our camera. I don't know whose it is, but somebody was taping me. And, and, and now I'm taping you. Okay, exactly. So, and I, there's police cameras all over Arizona taping me every time I drive down the street. Are you a firefighter? I want to go on my way. I've been told that I was free to go, yet I have an agent standing in front of my car. Let me know when I'm free to go. Safety, man. You Camera well, away from me. Sir, please put the camera Look, up. I did not do anything. I was just sitting here you looking for directions, and now you're coming to me and ask me what business I'm in. It doesn't matter what I do for a living. And I want to identify you. I match a description of someone who was assaulted in an assault. You know, I say you're making stuff up because you've come over here and I'm looking at directions and you're just mad because I won't tell you what I do for a living. It's none of your business what I do for a living. Okay, I'm minding my own business. Look, here's the rental car contract. Put the camera away. Why do I have to put the camera away? You got your camera in the back of your squad car. Hey, Stephen, what's your birthday? That's my business. I have the right to remain silent. Have you ever read the Constitution? You know, I want to know what happened to freedom in America anyway. Didn't I have the right to remain silent and I have to answer all these questions to a bunch of police when I'm just looking at directions? I told her what I was doing. Now I said I'm right trying to, to find directions to my destination. Arrest. What? If you're under arrest, do you have a right to remain silent? I'm not under arrest. I have the right to remain silent whether I'm under arrest or not. Do you know what the Fifth Amendment says? Do you, don't you have to study that to be a police officer? Don't you have to understand the laws of America?
and to understand that I don't have to answer any questions to any police officer, and that's the Fifth Amendment interpreted by the Supreme Court of the United States. And I was just sitting here looking at my directions, trying to figure out where to go. She came up and asked what I do for a living. I don't see why that's her business. Maybe if we were in communist Russia or something, I have to go around showing. Right. So. Stephen, you your papers back. I'm not saying what I do for a living, but I'm just sitting here trying to figure out where to go in the morning and trying to find a hotel on Microsoft Streets and Trips. Can you explain that to me? Can you explain to me why she took away my rental car contracts, putting me through the, the, uh, the ringer here? I guess not. I guess you guys don't have to answer any questions, but I do. Roll down the window a little farther. No, I'm not going to roll down the window any farther. That's how far I rolled it down. Hey, excuse me, sir. What, what kind of a gun is that that you got there? Am I being filmed right now? Yeah, you are. Okay. What, what, what kind of gun is that that you're holding? Why are you filming? I want to know why you think that's necessary to carry that kind of a weapon to walk up to people's cars in the airport. I don't have to answer your questions. It's none of your business. It's none of my business. Don't you work for me since I'm a citizen of Phoenix no, and the United States? I work for a sergeant. You want to talk to my sergeant? Call okay, doesn't your sergeant work for me? Isn't he a servant of the people? I'm not going to have this discussion. Doesn't your car say to protect and to serve and you're walking around with a machine gun harassing people? Huh? How would you feel if somebody walked up to your car with a machine gun? Huh? You don't want to answer me? Oh man, you're, you're pointing at people, telling them what to do, huh, with a machine gun. Hey, excuse me, what kind of gun did he say that is? An AR. An AR? Yeah. Right, thanks. Hey, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell me. Oh. Because I wasn't, I wasn't admiring it. Oh. So, I was telling him he shouldn't be pointing it in people's cars. Oh, he probably shouldn't. And I have so many more scriptures. I mean, can I, I'm just going to give you the references on some of these because I don't want to just go on and on here, okay? But Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 23, he says the same thing. It says that it talks about the citizens taking hold on somebody and bringing them in for the crime. Exodus 21, 12 through 19. Deuteronomy 22, 18 through uh, verse 30. And uh, those are three other long, lengthy passages that explain the same truth that I'm preaching to you right now. You see, here's, the, here's, here's what we live with, though. This is what we've got. Listen to this. Scottsdale officers hitting the streets. You see, now we have police being added in Scottsdale, not just driving up and down our streets every day, patrolling us and watching us and policing us. Now we have them walking up and down the streets from house to house, policing in the city of Scottsdale. It says, uh, this girl, here's an example. This girl's mother had taken her son to school and left her daughter alone in the apartment with the door unlocked. This is, a, this is not a child, though. This is a, an adult. Okay. The family is being, or a teenager or whatever. Family is being supervised by Child Protective Services. McDonald, this officer, also knocks on doors, warning residents that their garage door is open or that tools tossed in a truck bed are bait for burglars. McDonough, uh, Lori Stegall, 53, was surprised McDonough roused her because her front door was open behind a locked screen door, a possible sign of trouble. In the middle of the night, they wake up this woman in the middle of the night and say, I know your screen door is locked, but your door is not locked. Your garage door is open. Now listen, maybe you want half of your money to be taken out of your paycheck. I don't know, maybe you'd like to give all your money to the government so that the government can be your babysitter and police you and walk up and down the street and make sure that your doors, both doors are shut, not just one of the doors, and to walk up and down your street every day watching you. Hey, in a free society, you don't have a police state. Are you listening? With police walking up and down the street, driving up and down the road, watching you, making sure that you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. That's not freedom. Did you know in the United States it didn't used to be that way? Have you ever heard this term, the county sheriff? Has anybody ever heard that before? You know how big a county is? Yet they had a county sheriff. One man. They didn't have thousands going up and down the streets. Cameras on all the street corners. I was in Chicago, Illinois this week. You listen to me and you listen good. I preached it this morning that when a nation forgets God, when a nation turns away from their God, when a nation does evil in the sight of the Lord, they lose freedom. That's what the Bible says. I was in Chicago, Illinois this week. 
I was ironically driving down Independence Boulevard. Do you know the street, Brother David? <laughs> Independence Boulevard. If you want to buy drugs in Chicago, just get off at Independence Boulevard. Okay, so here's Independence Boulevard, ironically the name. And I wanted to take a picture, but I didn't have my camera. But right next to the street sign that said Independence Boulevard, there was a metal box like this on the light pole with a black dome with a 360-degree pan-tilt-zoom camera. You say, how do you know about this? Because I'm in the electronics business. I know about this. It's a camera that they can control like a joystick. They can zoom in on the head of a penny. And this camera's at the intersection. And it had the police logo on the side of the camera. It said Chicago Police Department. And they are watching that street with a, uh, a video lens. And they have a joystick. And they're watching what's going on all the time in the streets. In Great Britain today, and of course we're celebrating our independence this Friday, I wish people knew what that meant anymore. I wish people understood what this country was built on anymore and understood that this country is built on freedom and liberty and that July 4th is not just a day to blow off fireworks and eat a hot dog and a piece of cake, hey, but to understand that we live in the freest country that's ever existed on the face of the earth where we have freedom. Well, outside of Israel and the Bible, the second freest. But I'm going to tell you something. You think that the founding fathers of our country, you think that God has ordained this police state that we live in where the government is watching us on camera? Great Britain is who we got our independence from. And you know what? In Great Britain today, go to any city in Great Britain. Go to Manchester. Go to London. Go to any of these big cities. Every square inch of that city is on closed circuit television. Did you know that? Probably didn't know that, did you? I, I talked to my boss, my boss from Ireland. He said, oh yeah, closed circuit television everywhere. You walk down the street, Big Brother is watching you in England today. Why? Because the crime got so out of control that the police could not control it anymore, and they said, we just have to put the whole cities on camera. Every city is on camera. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk down the street and have cameras watching me all the time. That sounds like oppression. That sounds like slavery. That sounds like bondage. And that's what our country is going to because of sin. Sin always brings bondage. It brought the children of Israel into bondage again and again in the Bible. Big Brother watching you. Cameras everywhere in the United States of America walking down the street. Smile, you're on candy camera. In Tempe, Arizona, smile, you're on candy camera. It's, a, it's in Tempe. They're building cameras all over the... Hey, you, you say, what are, those are just red light violation cameras. Oh, yeah? We just saw another one. We drove down the road. It was a trailer that has a trailer hitch that hooks up to the back of a, a vehicle and the police drops that off at different places and it has closer to it's not an intersection nothing to do with speeding nothing to do with the red light there's no radar it has nine cameras looking in all different directions and it says mobile police surveillance unit and they're dropped off all over the city of tempe i can we can drive around at church i can show you and then when we're done with that i can drive you down to the tempe public library after the service and i can show you a tank a tank that will say on the side of it. I'm talking about a tank. I mean, I'm, does anybody know what a tank is? You know, it's got those big wheels with the things <laughs> on it, and it's got the big cannon and armor. You know what it says on the side of it? Tempe Police Department. It's at the Tempe Library. My wife goes there every week. There it is. A tank. <laughs> now, who's ever heard this word? Garrison. Put a brand you know that word. Don't be ashamed if you don't know. It's, it's not a word that's used around. Who knows what a garrison is? Who thinks you know what it is, a garrison? I'm not going to ask you to tell me, but who thinks you know what it is? A garrison is an army that's stationed among people to control them. Okay? This is what the Bible taught. The Bible uses this word a lot. When the Philistines took over the nation of Israel, they put garrisons in Israel. That means they had troops occupying that city, patrolling them, making sure that they were able to extort money from them, which is what the Philistines were doing, extorting grain, extorting money, taking away their freedom, controlling them. These garrisons were a result of God's judgment. They're standing troops and armies. There was a, now, what's the difference between some army, okay, controlling and oppressing you, and, and a police department that's got a tank and machine guns, and they drive up and down the road, and they have cameras and checkpoints and all this stuff? Hey, it's not of God. It's not found in God's laws. It's not making us any safer because we're just as dangerous as it was yesterday. In fact, it's more dangerous. And tomorrow, it's going to be even more dangerous. The statistics don't lie. The facts don't lie. Look, I've lived here for two and a half years. Look at the crimes that I've been facing. You know, that's just two and a half years. 
in a decent neighborhood. But Scottsdale officers are getting the street to walk up and down the street, making sure everybody's door is locked and the garage door is open. And, but what I want to know is who's going to protect us from them? <laughs> Listen to this. I don't even read this. This is too. This is too bad. I don't even want to talk about some of this stuff. It's so bad. But listen to this. A Lakeville man says he feels violated after two police officers woke him up at 3 a.m. to tell him his door was unlocked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Their surprise visit was part of a public service campaign to remind residents to secure their homes to prevent that. Now keep in mind, we're paying for these people. The Bible says that when the children of Israel, uh, or I'm sorry, when the Egyptians sold themselves into bondage to Pharaoh, they were taxed at 20%, which is much less than what we pay. Where do you think all that money? We gotta pay for all this, for these police to, to patrol us. And, and but we don't need them. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not done with the sermon. Buckle your seatbelts. I'm gonna tell you why we don't need them. Why, why we're spending just thousands of dollars out of our own money to the Tempe police. I mean, if you live in Tempe, you live in Phoenix, you're paying these people. You're being taxed heavily to pay for these people to protect you. Yet they're not protecting you. I don't rely on them for protection. I rely on my two swords. But the Bible says here, but they went further. So this guy felt a little violated when they woke up at 3 a.m. to tell him his door was unlocked. How would you like to be woken up? That'd be a little scary, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sir, <laughs> the door's unlocked. What are you doing? I didn't invite you in here. You know, I'm sure they knocked on the door. I'm just kidding. But anyway, it says, but they went further in Troy Moult's case on Thursday. Police entered the house where four children under seven were having a sleepover and then went upstairs to Mold's bedroom. Okay, so this one, they went into the house. They, oh, your door is unlocked. Oh, let's go upstairs into a bedroom with four children that are under seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. The police are God men. They never do anything wrong. We should just trust them. Let's just give all them the weapons. Let's give all the weapons to the police force and let's turn in all our weapons for a $100 gift card. I got so much material in this sermon, I don't know what to do with it. We can turn it in for a $100 gift card for Bastions. We can turn in our guns to the police. That's what he did. They'll give you a $100 gift card to Bastions if you give them your weapon. I'm not giving my weapon. I'm going to, you know. All right. I don't even shop at Bastions. I shop at Fry's Foods. Okay? I don't need a $100 gift card to Bastions to turn in my sword. But they went into the, they went into Troy Mold's house. They went upstairs where four children under seven were having a sleepover. They went upstairs to Mold's bedroom. The officers told Mold his garage door was open. The TV was on. The keys to his truck were left in the ignition and the door to his house was ajar. Well, yeah, the house was filled with people. A police spokesman said the intrusion was justified because the officers' initial door knocks went unanswered and they wanted to make sure nothing was wrong. Yeah, nothing was wrong until you got here and walked in on us. I mean, listen to this stuff. We're paying these people. Police chief won't... Uh, won't what does it say? Officer Chong Kim resigned on Wednesday. This is in Scottsdale. In the wake of a police investigation into a possible inappropriate search of a 19-year-old woman. The mother of the 19-year-old woman sent an email to police saying that when a call about a possible break-in, an officer inappropriately searched her daughter. An investigation into a similar allegation against Kim by different women in September was inconclusive. We're not really sure, but we keep getting all these reports about this same police officer, Chong Kim, who just, he'll be called out because they thought somebody's breaking in, and then he wants to pat down young women. It's, uh, we don't really know what to make of it. It's inconclusive, you know. This guy, his, the mom calls and I think somebody's breaking in, and he says, well, you know, I'm going to need to search her, your daughter, this 19-year-old girl. Can't really figure out why. Now, let me just break this to you. Police are human beings. They're sinners, like I would say, like you're saying. Number two, they're hirelings. They don't care about them. It's not their sheep. It's not their, it's not their family. Did you know this? Did you know that if you, and, and you know, if people aren't going to like this, I'm, sorry, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but you know what? Did you know that if you take a test to join the police department, did you know that if you score too high on that test, you cannot be a police officer? <laughs> That's true. Who, who, who can verify that what I'm saying is true right now? Yeah. You, it's true. I mean, if you, you, they take a test, and they want you to score high enough so that you're not just a numbskull. But if you score too high, they're like, sorry, 
you can't be a police officer. Because they can't control you enough, or I don't know what. So the people with the badge on are not always going to be the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> and they're not always going to be the most righteous, as in the case of our friend Sean Kim in Scottsdale. Okay, now I'm not saying all police officers are bad. Don't, don't, you know, say that I said things that I didn't say. I didn't say all police officers are bad. I said they're a higher way. I said they're ineffective. I said they cost too much money. I said they're worthless. That's what I said. Now listen, let's, let's, let's bring it. You say, Pastor Anderson, what's the answer? This is the answer. What's the moral of the story? What does all this mean? <laughs> hey, this is what it means. It means that if our society continues on the wicked downward spiral that it's on, mm -hmm. we are headed for a police state in this country. Mm -hmm. It's happened before. It'll happen again. I mean, they're tapping our phone lines. It went through Congress weeks ago, you know. The, the, you know, uh, and you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a conservative, you know. But I guess I'm a libertarian almost in some ways more than I'm a conservative. But you know what? I'm a conservative. But you know what? The, the conservatives just want to tap our phone lines and, and, and uh, check our emails. And you know, the liberals want to, you know, they want they want to take away our freedoms in other areas. They want to take all our money away. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. The answer is not even a political answer. The problem is that when you spit in the eye of God and when you do evil in the sight of the Lord and turn away from God's laws, your nation will, will go into bondage and go into sin. You can't have liberty without the Spirit of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And where the Spirit of the Lord is not, go to the nation that rejects Christianity, there's no liberty. There's no liberty today in communist China where Christianity is illegal. Where it's against the law to have more than one child. There's no liberty with the United Nations who forces sterilizations around the world. Who forces people to be sterilized against their will in third world countries. There's no freedom with the United Nations. There's no freedom with communist China. And you know what? The only answer for America out of the situation we're in, the police state that's coming, that the, the big brother is watching you that's coming, where all of our freedoms are going to be taken away and we're going to decide, well, I guess it's time to dissolve the bans that have tied us to this government like they did in 1776. We're not going to be able to because there's going to be a policeman waiting outside our door and a camera pointed at our front door. And so what's the answer? We've got to cleanse the wickedness out of our lives in this country. You can't live in sin and, and wickedness and expect to live free. You've got to choose. Now look, you've got to choose in your personal life. Do you want to be free, or do you want to live a wicked and ungodly life? And then our nation's going to have to decide, do we want to be free in America, or do we want to have eat, drink, and be merry, and free love, and free dope, and, and, and alcohol, and wickedness? We've got to decide between those two. Porno or freedom? Sin, freedom. In your personal life? Yes. In your, uh, as a nation's life? Yes. I don't know about you. I like what Patrick Henry said. Give me liberty or give me death. Live free or die. Hey, I don't want to be a slave in my life. And I don't think you want to be a slave. And I don't want America to go into slavery. Let's knock these doors. Let's preach the gospel. Let's stand on rooftops and cry out against sin. And turn this nation back to God. It's the only answer. Let's bow our hands and have a word of prayer. Father, we love you and thank you so much for the Bible. And God, you definitely have all the answers to keep us safe. I just wish that we would listen.